This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. It's a it's a very deep thing that people are coming and joining in one place and with the same intention coming from different places in the world and with different backgrounds and still coming from four wings of the universe to do the same thing together to learn or to pray or to to make good good deeds of grace when those souls are coming and uniting so the light of the individuals when it's joining to the rest is creating and revealing new shades and new qualities and by that opening more access to other people to recognize and to see the light when some person walks in the dark and you see a blur small amount of light from far distance so it's hard for him to know that that's for sure going to be his salvation because that light can be the light of many things doesn't necessarily mean a safe city or a home or something warm it, like it it can be a fire it can be a, 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 a street light it can be some like a, a factory it can, it can be many things it, it doesn't necessarily mean home when you see and recognize oh that's my house that's my home when you can recognize more details when you can see more when it's closer so for an example when one person is learning, when one person is a believer, he believes in Hashem, he claims to believe and he is going and saying, yes, I believe. How many people can he relate to? How many souls he can save? How many people he can teach? Only a small amount of people. Why? Because if you see one person from long distance, it's hard to recognize him. But if you see a huge amount of people, a bunch of people, a group, a community, you're going to see them from far distance because there are many. And every one of them will have the ability to communicate with more people and to share his thoughts with more people and to open by that the way, the path for thousands and thousands of people to come closer. So when we are coming to one place, gathering with our pure intention, so only that fact that we joined makes the light of our soul shine in new ways, in new shades, in, in, with new light, additional light that we are enjoying and receiving from each other. In my tour, when I'm going from one community to the other, from one country to the other, I see many, many kinds of people. And I must tell you that people are so precious, are so amazing. I see such gentle, and wonderful souls along the way in, in our journey that it's, it's frightening. And I'll tell you why. Because when I speak to those people that they're all coming with pure intentions, with good, good heart, with a reason to learn, to come closer to the Creator, Honest people, truthful people, nice people, sweet people. And they're all 
with no exceptions, holding themselves so low. Everyone, me, I'm apologizing that I came to your class. Is it okay that I'll participate in your class? Is it okay that I'm coming to the synagogue? People feel that they need to apologize for being who they are. And you would think to yourselves, only maybe non-Jews, maybe people that are from different nations and they feel not comfortable, they are not sure if it's their place or if it's not their place. No, it's not finishing with them. I can see and recognize this amazing thing also in the soul of our nation, of my nation, of the Jewish people. People are coming and everyone feels that he is the worst and he hasn't started yet and he needs to learn and he doesn't know and he feels so far and you don't know what I've been through and I, what I went through and everyone is telling me stories like what could you do that I haven't done? <laughs> like, tell me your story. Oh, I lived for a few years in this place and in that place and I was partying and I was doing drugs. I, like, everyone is coming with stories. And I sinned in this sin and I violated that commandment. And everyone, like, feels so horrible with himself. I'm not even keeping Shabbat. I'm not even eating kosher. And, like, so what? I don't understand why you don't recognize the light of your soul. The fact that you came here is showing already how amazing you are. Because why in the world that you will find yourself coming to my class if not because of an inner flame of fire that is attaching you to every good thing in the world? Why you came? Why did you came to learn Torah? Why did you came to your class that is teaching about faith, about how to, to become a happier person, on how to come closer to the Creator, how to, how to be better with people, to judge yourself favorably? What's the purpose? What's the reason that you came? If not that that is your inner passion, that that is your real desire to become good, to nullify yourself to the real purpose of your creation. Now, people think to themselves that because that they are not angels, that they are not completely righteous and they are not perfect, that they are horrible and that they are bad and that they are useless and they are worthless. And people are falling to such low places because they're broken self-esteem. When the Creator Himself doesn't think like that at all. Because the Creator is looking on each and every one of us with one eye of mercy. The Zohar Kadosh is saying that the Creator is looking at us with Chad Eina Derachame. One eye of mercy. Mercy, the meaning of the word mercy, Rachamim, means that the Creator, He loves you an unconditional love that is not based on your merits, on your privilege on how much you achieved until today, just because of the loving kindness of the Creator on you as His child, as a creation, that He created you, so He loves you. Now, if the Creator is looking at you like that, why you are going with all your blamings and your self-criticism and self-hatred and blaming yourself and humiliating yourself with no end? and punishing yourself, and hating yourself, and, and there are people with, with such yetzerara, such horrible evil inclination, even sabotaging and destroying their own lives, failing themselves, and punishing themselves, and destroying themselves, throwing themselves to alcohol, and to drugs, and to bad habits, and, 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 and destroying themselves. And why? All those things are growing out of certain feeling of guilt, of, of, of blame, of shame. Now we need to check. If really you're such an evil creation, you're such a horrible person, so like, why the Creator is keep on sending in your path good things to help you? 
if you're so awful, if you're so wrong, if you're so far, so how can it be that you saw so many miracles in your life, such amazing supervision on your life, that you saw the hand of Hashem running your life, fixing your life, taking care of you, saving your life in crazy situations. I remember myself, before of the army, I went with a friend to, I don't know how you, a trip is a good name to call it, because we went for 19 days to Amsterdam. And except of a trip, it was nothing else. It was a hell of a trip over the 19 days in Amsterdam. And in a certain night, one of the nights, we were like totally out of sanity, looking for our way back to the hotel, for the small apartment that we rent over there. And we didn't know, we couldn't recognize the way. We were secular, we didn't no faith, we were not praying for them, like we were just partying, doing drugs and whatever. Walking in the dark nights in, in Amsterdam. Walking and looking for our hotel. Suddenly a person came to us and asked us if we want his help to guide us to the hotel. Of course, innocent people. He said, yes, why not? And he took us to the entrance. And then he said, okay, now you need to pay for my service. And we told him, what do you mean? We were talking like we were like, and it, he was not a friend. He didn't mean to really help us. He just wanted our money. And not that he wanted a small amount of money. He was like really over there to make a lot of money in that evening. And we started arguing with him. And that person went to the side and took a stick from the ground and was coming to hit us and started to fight violence with us in the middle of the street. And we were like out of here. We were stoned. We were not able to, like nothing. He would beat us up for sure. And while that person is grabbing that stick from the ground and standing and about to come and start hitting us, suddenly we hear Kasuto, like the, my family name, from 100 feet away. Three friends of us, we didn't know that they are in Amsterdam, soldiers from the army, just finished service, their service in the army, and first vacation they made in Amsterdam, two, three fighters, three like warriors like that, are coming toward us. That guy just saw them, in a second they disappeared into the alley and vanished and gone. And that miracle that took place in my life, in our life, that Hashem just sent those three angels, Israelis, that know us, that we grew up together, to recognize us in the exact moment that we needed them, because we didn't know how we are finishing this situation. It came not because of our holiness, not because of the merits of the mitzvot that we just finished keeping in a hidden way. No, 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 no. We came from the club, we came from the coffee shop, we were done. We were not clean, we were not pure. I was there, I know, I, I'm telling you. We were not clean. But Hashem, He shown His love on us, and His love is an unconditional love. So when you recognize the love of the Almighty on you, in your life, it's time for you to believe in yourself. It's not time for you to keep on blaming yourself and hating yourself on the false blamings of the evil inclination that is not stopping from destroying your self-esteem. Because all the purpose of the evil inclination, of the power of darkness, is to make you think that you are not worthy, that the Creator doesn't love you. Because the Yetzirah cannot force you not to serve. He cannot force you because he doesn't have that ability to block your way to the synagogue, to block your way to prayer, to learn. He cannot hold you back. He can do only one thing. He can speak to you in your thoughts, to plant negative thoughts in your mind that you will give up on your own purpose, that you will fall to sadness and gonna give up and fall to despair, to your own depression, that you will get angry and frustrated and gonna say, it's not for me. 
I'm not welcome, I don't have a share in the world to come, I'm not Jewish, I'm not keeping Shabbat, like whatever, whatever he's telling you. When you have negative thoughts in your mind, you should know that someone is fooling you. Someone is making a joke out of you. Someone is standing in the side and making fun on your account. Is laughing at you, destroying you because you have a free choice. You are a Baal Bhira. You are a personality that can choose. And as a person that is able to choose, no matter what you will choose, will be accepted in heaven. If you will choose to do good, it will be accepted. If you will choose to go off the way, to do wrong, to do evil things, there will be no one to stop you. The Creator will try and will send messages and will provide all the good information and will try to rescue from many situations in life. But if a person is deciding to do wrong, there is nothing to do. But if he is also, from the other side, choosing to do good, there is no bad in the world that can stop him from climbing and achieving and growing and blooming and succeeding in all aspects, in all ways of life. And we should be confident in that. That's real confidence in Hashem, that the Creator is with you. Now we are judging ourselves usually based on the failures of our actions. Oh, I didn't wake up early in the morning. I couldn't finish Dafa Yomi. I was not learning enough. I was talking Lashon Ara. I failed in Shabbat. I was not eating kosher. I forgot to wash my hands. Whatever. I didn't pray in Minyan. What are all the thoughts, all the negative thoughts. I'm lazy, all the thoughts. Why? Because you see in your actions that you failed. That one time you really didn't catch that minyan, or that you never put feeling in your life. Whatever, you look at your physicality on your actions, and according to that, you're judging yourself. But I'm going to tell you, that if you will look on our history, if you're going to stare and look deep into the ancient scripts, and you're going to learn about the pillars of our nation, if you're going to try to learn from the real righteous ones, those ones that built us and designed our character and they are the light that to that light we walk and they are the pillar of fire in front of our camp. If you will check their actions, you will see that all of them, with no exceptions, messed up big time. They failed huge failures. And we can go one after the other and you will see that each and every one of those huge righteous ones failed big time in his life. First man on earth, he sinned badly. First woman, she messed up big time. Their children, it was a horrible story. They killed each other. That's the first generation. Think about Abram. Think about Noah. First of all, let's talk about Noah. Noah, he was a righteous man. He was an ish tzaddik. Noah, he was the leader of his generation. He been saved based on his righteousness. He been saved from the flood. Now, after the flood, he started crying. After he been saved with the animals, he with his family and the animals, he started to cry. The Creator told him, Ra'aya Shatya, you're a foolish leader, you're a fool. Now you're crying after I brought down the flood and thousands of people died. Every human being that lived on earth except of your family, they all died and drowned in the water. Now you are crying. You were supposed to cry before I brought the flood. I made you work for so many days that you will wake up to pray and you did not. You didn't pray for the people. Now you're crying. Look what a failure of Noah. Abraham Avinu, the head of our nation, that pillar of faith that no one can understand his greatness. Really? You know which horrible failure he had, for an example, in his life, that he doubted Hashem's faith, and Hashem told him, because that you failed, I'm going to send all 
your children, all your seed to Egypt to hundreds of years to be slaves over there and to die. Babies gonna be thrown to the Nile, gonna be eaten by crocodiles, gonna be put inside the cement under the bricks in the, in the houses that they will work. Women will be destroyed, raped and abused. Men will suffer. All to teach you that you shouldn't doubt me. So now that man of faith just realized that because of him, hundreds and thousands of people are about to die. And 80% of Am Israel died in Egypt before the salvation and redemption that took place after hundreds of years. All that sorrow was a result of the failure of Abram. Now, what we saw about Abram, if you would hear about yourself that you messed up so badly that all of your legacy, all your future family are about to suffer something that's similar to the Holocaust, a horrible camps of work and death and violence and, and, and abusement, and they're all going to suffer because of you, what would you do? You would shoot yourself in the head. But Abram, he didn't bought no vodka and no scotch and he didn't do no drugs. He did tshuva. He started doing tshuva. And that's the greatness of our ancestors. Moshe Rabbeinu, that man of God, Isha Elohim. You know he killed a man? Now you will say he killed someone. How would you feel if you would kill a man? Would you forgive yourself if you would kill a man? He killed a man. That person killed a man. That person failed in few places while trying to save his people. That person been betrayed by most of the rabbis that lived, most of his people. Rashi is saying that all the men suspected him of, for being with, his, with their wives. Everyone fought with him. Everyone hated him. Everyone were arguing with him. He was alone. He'd been kicked out of the palace that was his house. He couldn't grow up with his children, with, it, with, his, with his family. He was in the desert for 60 years. 10 years of his life he lived in prison. Jethro hold him, held him in prison in a pit for 10 years. Now you're talking about an ex-convict? -con -con Ten years in prison after killing a man and he becomes to be the leader of your nation. He needs to go back and to speak to Pharaoh. Is that a prototype of a righteous man that you would imagine to yourself that you want to look up to? A person that spent 10 years in prison, a person that killed a man in the middle of a, of a street fight, a person that found himself 60 years alone in the desert. All those righteous people, you can find so many horrible lackings in their lives, but it didn't stop them from working and fixing themselves and completing the mission that had been set for them by the Creator. Shimshon, Samson, he saw a beautiful woman and he loved her. And she was not Jewish, but he loved her and he didn't know what to do and he converted her. If you would see some Goya non-Jewish woman and you would start now putting the effort to convert her and to make her Jewish just because that you liked her, you wouldn't hold yourself as righteous. You would judge yourself in a very negative way. You would say bad things about yourself on why you're doing it. But he was the eyes of Hashem in that generation. He was the potential Mashiach of his generation. He saved Am Israel from horrible decrees. You cannot understand the greatness of a person because of the low actions and the failures that he had to go through in his life. King David sent a man to the war because he wanted to marry his wife. And that man been killed. And he made sure that she, that, that soldier will write 
um, um, at, um, a get pitorin that she will be divorced legally by the rules of the Torah and he made it all perfect for himself to get married with her. But when he been rebuked by the prophet, by Natana Navi, he was a man enough to admit that he messed up, that he was wrong, that he failed, and he did tshuva. And when he did tshuva, then Batkol, a voice from heaven, been heard in the whole kingship of Israel, of Yehuda, and everyone heard that King David became become the fourth will of the holy chariot of heaven ahead to our ancestor ancestors greater than abram isaac and jacob why because he did tshuva because he was brave and humble enough to admit i messed up in the place that bale tshuva are standing even complete righteous people cannot stand why because when a righteous man is so pure that he does not sin and he is always being observant and keeping Torah and mitzvot and he is going in that clean path, his life are so easy compared to the life of a person that used to sin, that used to darkness, that grew up in the filth of lust and desires and bad attributes. For that person, for the person that comes out of darkness, he needs to fight with so many difficulties. He has so many obstacles that he needs to remove his family, his friends, people that knows him, all of his bad attributes, the anger, the sadnesses, the, 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 the negativity that he was going with, bitterness, and all of his lackings, the scars, all of his bad habits, he used to drink, he used to smoke, he used to drive, he used to drive fast. What All the bad things that he was used to as the old person that he was before. Now he need to cut himself from all those things. He need to, 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 to redesign himself in a new world. And it's hard. He cannot only keep Shabbat. He also needs not to violate Shabbat. A righteous man, it's simple. What can he do in Shabbat except of accepting it, except of singing in it, except of walking calmly and happily to the synagogue? But a person that is a Baal Tshuva, a person that made a huge comeback from darkness, every bike that is making his way to the beach, is an evil inclination, is a voice in his hand. Every car that is going with their beatbox, with their sound, with their bass machines and destroying his mind and he like needs, no, I'm not joining them. Every party, every cigarette, every smoke, every smell, everything is calling him. That's you, come back. Look, people are happy over there. People are clubbing, people are partying, people are making fun, people are enjoying life. Look at you with your beard, with your long sleeves, with your head cover, with your dress, with all the things. Yet the uh, is coming and attacking. You're not enjoying life. You're wasting your time. And anyway, Hashem won't help you. And anyway, Hashem don't answer your prayers. And look how many times you prayed and you haven't been answered. And look those people, how they're succeeding. All day long, drilling, 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 drilling in the mind of the Baal Tshuva. And the Baal Tshuva is fighting with all that negativity. He is fighting to not let it beat him down. Do not let it knock him down. Why? Because his heart is a flaming fire to Hashem. So in the same time that he's trying to be simple, just to pray a little bit, just to learn a little bit, he needs in one hand to hold the cedar and with one hand to fight with another half of the world. It's not only standing and praying like that, happily and calmly. He cannot pray one prayer calmly and quietly. In his mind, the thoughts are attacking and destroying. 
and sabotaging every good intention and every pure thought. And he needs to fight. So a Baal Tshuva, when he's putting that effort and making that path, making that way, he's achieving so much more than a pure person that never sinned in his life. Because the reward is corresponding to the effort. agra. How much effort did you put in Avodat Hashem? That's how much you're going to achieve. No one tells you you need to reach the 1,000th floor. If you came from minus 1,000 and you're finding yourself on zero in the end of your life, you still achieved 1,000 floors. You don't need to check where am I holding. You need to check where am I holding compared to where that I was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And not to judge yourself based on trying to compare yourself to other people that in reality there is no connection between you guys. You are walking on different lanes. You are allowed to drive only 60 and on his lane you can drive 120, 140. So that's why he's flying. He's flying because he has wings. You still don't have wings. But compared to your power, compared to your ability, you are flying much faster than him. You will see that you will achieve certain things that no matter what he will achieve and will do in his life, he won't be able to achieve, you know what? The highest thing of them all. What's the highest thing of them all? The humility that you have. You can achieve humility. You can be humble. Why? Because the Creator made a huge favor with you and humbled you completely. When you want to pray, Hashem is closing your Sidhu. And you say to you, you won't pray today. And you say, okay, I'm going to learn. Hashem is closing the book. And you say, you know what? So I'm just going to go to the synagogue and the doors are locked for you. And you say, okay, I'm going to sit with my family. And you don't have Shalom Bayit. You have wars in your house. And you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to go and do it Bodedut. And immediately when you start talking to Hashem, your phone is ringing and texts all over the place. And you start itching and there's mosquitoes all around you. And you can't find one moment of quiet. And you want to keep Shabbat and you don't know how to keep Shabbat. And you want to put fill in and you don't have a pair so you don't know what to do and where I'm going to hold them and what I'm going to do. And all those things that are coming to you looks like obstacles. Look to your eyes like you are not welcome to serve Hashem. But in reality, they are your opportunity to grow. Because if you're going to overpower your sadness, your bad midot, and you're not going to give up on your goal, on your inner desire, what that you will achieve will be the highest level of them all. Because all those obstacles, all those barriers that are standing and holding you back are making you stronger, are developing a certain armor on your body that is protecting you from fire and water, heat and cold. And with that armor, you can save lives of hundreds and thousands of people because of who Hashem made you to be. Yesterday, I said, I gave a class in Myrtle Beach with some very nice people. Few of them were very young people sitting and talking and chatting. After that conversation we had, one of them told me, you know why I relate to you? And I felt like you helped me so much because we experience the same things. I am today in that place that you were 20 years ago. So because of my horrible life experience, that I'm going to think that it's horrible, that I'm going to say to myself, you waste your years, you didn't learn, and you sinned, and whatever. The truth is that because that I came out of that place, I was able yesterday to give an answer, a right advice that will hit the spot for that person. Only because that really the Creator was wise to bring me down in that place. And He brought me down to wake up and to do tshuva from a certain darkness, from a certain place. Now you have your path. You have your place. And if you will just accept it 
as the mission of your life. To be a pillar of light in your place, to be a lighthouse to the people that are around you, no matter who you are, no matter where you are at, which nation you belong to, and which family you're supposed to be part of, which customs you grew up on, which community is accepting you or not accepting you, the color of your skin and the sound of your accent and your vocabulary and amounts of knowledge. I'm telling you, put all of your physicality aside and focus on the light of your soul and go and shine. Just shine. Just go and spread your inner understanding of how a person should be good in this lifetime. As good as you can be. And you will see that you will save lives. You will see that you will fish souls out of the water of flood. Out of the storm you will rescue people. You will save lives of people. I know a person that lives in Colombia. And that person is not Jewish. And he opened the yeshiva in Colombia in Bogota. And he called that a Breslev, a Muna Breslev Center Bogota. And that person is pulling hundreds of people to that center. And you cannot understand it. And he's not Jewish. And every rabbi that he's talking to him is rejecting him. And when he wanted to come to the Holy Land of Israel to, for a visit, they kicked him and his family from Israel. They didn't let them in because they were afraid that they are illegal immigrants. They, like he is being destroyed on an hourly basis. No matter what he tries to do, all the doors are locked for him. But he is wise because he's not surrendering. So he's just keep on being who he is, who he wants to be. Even though the, the doors are closed, the doors to his soul are not closed. You know why? Because they are not in the hands of people. The doors to Hashem are not in the hands of rabbis, are not in the hands of Beisdin. The doors to Hashem are open from within. It's inside of you that Hashem lives. You don't need people. You need your soul. You need Hashem. Now where is Hashem? Betoch ami anochi yoshavet. Inside my people. Inside your soul. Which soul you carry? Chelek eloka mimal. A portion of heaven from above. A godly soul. Neshama elokit. That's what you have. A pure soul. Neshama shenatata bi Your soul is a beam of light that is shining from the big light that it's Hashem. Hashem gave a portion of Himself into your vehicle, into your body. And that's who you are. You are a godly creature, creation. You're a godly soul. You are heaven dressed in human beings. You are Betzelem Elohim Barautan. He created you in His shape. Which shape? Which shape the Creator has? En lo guf, en lo dmut ha guf. He doesn't have a body. He doesn't have a figure. He doesn't have arms, legs, head, neck. He doesn't have those physical organs to walk with. But He still created you in His shape. Your soul been created in Hashem's soul's shape. Your inner shape is a godly shape. Your spiritual shape is a godly shape. Inside of you Hashem lives. When Samson, Shimshon Agibor, the hero, was fighting and in the middle of the war protecting his people, he was thirsty. Hashem created a spring inside his cheek. Inside his mouth suddenly found a spring of water. He drank fresh water from his own mouth. When the babies been thrown to the Nile, stones would rise, pop up from the ground in the middle of the river, and those babies being saved, and they would find suddenly a small, smooth, clean stone, 
and were holding it in their hand and drinking milk and honey from the stone. When Am Yisrael were thirsty in the desert, there was a, there was a, a, a well that was walking with them to every place they camp. A walking and moving well with fresh and pure water. Those wonders and those miracles took place in the life of people that were not so righteous. Not because of their holiness those miracles took place in their lives. There were sinners in the camp of Israel. There were people that were arguing and fighting with Moses and they were also going to the same well and drinking water. They saw the same miracles and same wonders. They had a free choice and you have the free choice. And if you will choose to give yourself a chance and that's the meaning of doing tshuva, to give yourself another chance. And you know what? The wonderful and most amazing thing in the world is that to do tshuva, to give yourself a chance, it's a mitzvah. You're going to be rewarded on giving yourself a chance. But on blaming yourself and hating yourself and punishing yourself and slaughtering and killing yourself, you won't be rewarded. You're not allowed to do that. To break your soul, your spirit, it's not allowed. You should protect your spirit. You should cherish the nature of your creation to appreciate who Hashem made you. When you criticize yourself, you're criticizing the Creator. When you have complaints on yourself, you have complaints on the one that made you as you are. And I'll tell you why you are weak. And I'll tell you why you are scared. And why you are failing in so many things like me. On daily basis I'm failing. It's not a secret. It's clear, it's known, it's obvious. We're going through thousands of up and downs every day, trying and falling and failing and rising and achieving and, and, and failing again. And trying and hoping and praying and then angry and losing ground. It's like everyone are like that. Why? Because it's dark outside, guys, because we're in the exile, because the temple has not been built yet, and the redemption didn't take place yet, and we are just in the darkness. So when it's dark, you cannot see. You're hitting the walls all the time. You're, 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 you're falling and, and bumping the furnitures because it's dark. That's why you don't know how to do this, and you don't know how to do that. Why? Because you're blind in the dark. Not because of something is wrong with you. It's just not shining enough outside. But it's shining from within. Outside is dark. The world is very dark today. But inside you can see the light. And it's the light of your soul that is shining from within. And it's the light of Hashem that is keep on strengthening you and cheering you up and pushing you forward and toward a better future with hope. And with an inner inspiration, with a purpose in life, to go and to do good, and to fight for justice, and to save the weak from governments, and from wealthy and strong people that are blocking the way of us to succeed, of arrogant people, violent people, cruel people, that are trying to possess us, that are trying to control us that are trying to hold us under their control. We need to rebel. We need to fight. Now, it doesn't mean that you need to go now and make a revolution. You need yourself not to surrender to those systems. You yourself need to be strong and to stand up for the weak to help them, for the poor to support them. And if you're the poor, you should understand that you should support yourself. If you haven't been educated well enough, you need to educate yourself. If you haven't learned and been taught good and well enough, you need to teach yourself. And it's okay not to know. It's okay not to understand. No one will blame you and judge you on things that you never had the opportunity and the chance to, to grab, to hold, to learn. Can someone be upset with me that I didn't keep Shabbat until I was 20 when my father never kept Shabbat in his life and my mother never kept Shabbat in her life? 
We never pay attention to any Shabbat that passed away. It was only an opportunity to go to the beach or the zoo. Those were the options. There was nothing holy in that day. We wouldn't go to school. It was fun. We could wake up later and do the... Actually, I was waking up later even in the school days. But for my brothers, for my brothers, let's say. In reality, you cannot blame yourself on who you are because you didn't create yourself. And to blame yourself on who you are is just to fall into that trap of the evil inclination that is just trying to destroy your self-esteem that you yourself will lose hope lose faith, lose confidence, lose your happiness, and fall into the sadness and despair, depression of your fake sins. Because even if you sin, even if you fail, I'll ask you, what's the reason you failed? Remind yourself now a horrible thing you did in your life. Okay, wow, I'm so impressed, you are a sinner, great. Okay, now let's deal with that sin. What was the reason that you sinned? Maybe you felt that you were not loved enough. Maybe you were terrified, you were afraid of something. You felt you had to impress some other people. You had some reason why to do that thing. If you're going to go deep into the real reason why you failed in that failure, and I'm telling you it's a rule for all your failures, you're going to see that you were innocent. That you were a pure soul that didn't know how to deal with life at all because your soul, who you are, never been taught how to deal with those situations. You didn't know, you never learned how to appreciate your wife well enough. I'm learning things after 20 years of marriage and after 20 years of trying to be a good husband and I still have so much to learn. My father, with all due respect, he was not the perfect husband. My mother, with all due respect, she was not the perfect wife. And I couldn't learn from them, from where I was supposed to learn, from television. I never saw perfect parents in television, I'm sorry, and I watched thousands of hours of television. You can't learn from those things that were offered to you as the source of learning, as, the, as, as your educators, teachers in school. It's a joke. Rabbis in your communities, with all the respect, everyone needs help. Everyone needs help. So who are you going to learn from? You don't have a real source to learn from, except from your failures and your downs and meeting the floor again, and hitting the wall again, and realizing, oh, that was not the right way. Oh, yeah, that was not the right direction. And slowly, slowly, Hashem is focusing you. Hashem is bringing you to the center. Hashem is bringing and straightening you to walk in a straight and, and honest line. And you're becoming more and more humble, and sensitive, and kind. And you're working on yourself, and you're improving. You are. Even if you're walking, you think, oh, I'm uh, slower than a turtle. Okay. But even as a turtle, you would understand that a turtle, you can appreciate him because he doesn't have the ability of a cheetah, of a tiger, of a deer to run and to jump. And if a turtle will walk all of his life with his ability, he will also can achieve a huge, amazing, impressive distance. And he will be rewarded based on his skills and his power and the real purpose of his life. Not everyone's supposed to be eagles. Not everyone's supposed to be pilots. No. You have people that's supposed to, to fix the Beit midrash to clean the tables. You need to have people that will clean the garbage in the streets. You need to respect them. Every word is, work is respecting the person that works in that job. You, that's the, that's your, 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 those are your skills, that's your ability, that's your mission, and you should find the godliness that is treasured in, the, in your life. You should be a nicer and more kind person while being who Hashem made you to be. You don't need to be righteous, you don't need to be a genius. If you're not Jewish or Hasid or I don't know what, a Breslever or Chabadnik or Litvish, Ashkenazi, Sfaradi, 
You're answering to different definitions. You are who you are. And like that's who Hashem made you. Now you think that Hashem didn't know. You think that Hashem didn't think enough. You think that Hashem failed. Oh, Hashem gave you your nose. What a failure. Hashem gave you that. The brown eyes and not the blue one. Like, what do you think? You have a mission. And you are qualified for your mission. You've been built, created, designed for your mission. No one else in the world can do your job. Your children will never need another mother than you. Your, your wife, she will never get to need another husband. She needs you. Just she needs you really to be you. They really need you to be your true self. And not to try to fake it till you make it. Not to try to pretend to be someone you're not. You know how many years it took for me to understand that my children, they need a father and not a rabbi? It took me years. It took me years to realize that. Because I thought that if I will be holier, that if I'll learn more, that if I will spend more hours in the Beit Midrash, the results were that they were longer hours in the streets. <laughs> that was the only direct result of me staying in the Beit Midrash. That my kids were more hours losing their mind, hitting the walls, fighting with each other, fighting with friends, destroying the life of my wife. Like th that was the direct result of me needing to be a... Shtuyot is nonsense. It's not the truth. They need a father. That's why they came as my children and didn't show up in my life as my students. My students, they don't need me to be not their husbands and not their father. They need me to be a friend. They need me to be a rabbi. They need me to be who I am to, for them. We don't need to change. We just need to reveal our honesty to be truthful really to be who we are, to reveal the qualities that have been treasured inside of us by the Almighty, and just to let ourselves be who we are. And then the light of our souls will shine because we're not going to block it by pretending to be someone else, covering ourselves with new masks and costumes and, 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 and shows and whatever that are only blocking the light of our true being. When you're honest, you open your mouth and illuminating words of truth, pearls of wisdom are coming out, even if you're not the wisest one. Why? Because you're saying the truth. When students of mine are telling me after classes, you were talking to me, I felt you were talking directly to me, I'm telling you, I'm sorry to disappoint you, I was not talking to you at all. I was only talking about myself. I'm so selfish, it's crazy. Like I'm only doing tshuva in public. I'm just using this stage to do tshuva, my own tshuva. That's what I'm doing. I'm just talking my life on camera, live with you. I'm just sharing for my life process. But because that I'm being honest while exposing and expressing and explaining my journey, the truth that is coming out of my mouth relates to the truth that you have inside of yourselves. That's why it links. That's why you feel connection. You don't feel connection to me. You feel connection to the truth. Because I'm revealing truth and you feel connection to that truth. Because you have truth inside of you. And truth, there is only one. This is a microphone. It's not a spoon. It's not a knife, it's not an Instagram, it's not a table, it's not, it's not a car, it's a microphone. I am who I am. I'm not you, I'm not you, I'm not you, I'm not you. I'm, I'm me. There is only one truth and there are many, 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 many lies, potential lies. There is only one truth. When we are seeking for the truth, we will find the same answer to all of our questions. We're all going to find it. We're going to find the truth. That's why I'm not supposed to convince you what the truth is. I just need to convince you to look for the truth. And then you'll find it. I don't need to worry that your truth will fit to me. Because if I believe that there is one truth, I should believe that in the end of your journey, you'll find it. Because it's there. I should believe that it's there for you. Exactly like that I found it inside of myself. Truth, there is one. The seal of the Creator is the seal of truth. 
When you attached yourself to the truth, you found Hashem. Because Hashem Elokechem Emet, He is the God of truth. You want to know Hashem? Who is Hashem? He will explain that Hashem is this, and He will explain that Hashem is that, and He will tell you that to know Hashem for that, you need to do this and that. And the other guy will tell you that if you're talking while your eyes are open, for sure there's no way you'll find Hashem. Like everyone will give you a different way, a different recipe. No one of those ways will fit to you. You know why? Because they are all external. And like that we explained that there is only one truth and bunch of lies, also there is only one inner gate for you to find the truth and it's inside of yourself. And all the other options that are external, that are outside, are coming from al Shika, the world of lies. And it can dress itself in rabbis, and it can dress itself in holy books, and it can dress itself in communities, it can dress itself in your family, it can dress itself in the mirror that is showing to you the outside layer of your body. You can fall in the mistake of the illusion of this fake world that really does not exist at all. Because the world is only coverings that are blocking the real true light of Hashem. And you cannot see Hashem from outside because the outside is those curtains. The only way to see Hashem is from within. Inside of yourself you have a soul. Your soul is a speaker. Lecha amar libi bakshu panai tamid. To you, your heart is saying, look for Hashem always. The verse is saying, your soul is calling you from within. Search for me. Look for the truth. Find who you are. Have a purpose in life. Have meaningful life. Don't betray yourself. Don't give up on your dreams. That's the voice of your soul. And it's calling you from within. And we must be warriors to find our inner connection, to count on our inner voice, to count on ourselves, to believe in ourselves, that the Creator is with us, that that one that made those wonders in our lives, He will keep on supporting and building and healing and helping us in the future as well. And every time you find yourself in trouble, in fear, in anxiety, in pressure, Go to a quiet place and reconnect yourself to the real purpose of your being. Ask yourself, okay, what am I doing in this situation? Hashem, help me. I want to know the answer. Suddenly something will come. The inner voice will tell you it will be okay. An inner voice will tell you, go talk to her, apologize. An inner voice will tell you, don't worry, you'll have another option. An inner voice will come and guide you. Don't be scared to believe in yourself and to follow your inner confidence. Because the Creator lives inside of you. And you should find Him within, inside of yourself. You heard me? Okay, go teach your friends. Thank you very, very much. Um, hi. Emuna Project, our project is a non-profit organization that is going and distributing this message to the wide world in so many languages and on all social media outlets, at least all social, all social media outlets I heard of we're using to spread the light between the souls of the truth seekers. Please help us. You can enjoy mm, close to 2,000 videos, lectures like that one that you heard today online, on Facebook, on YouTube, Instagram, SoundCloud, and, and, uh, and, uh, and more and on our website emuna.com and please give us a hand and support our activities through our donation um, section on our website donate at emuna.com and you can also be in touch with me if it's through email if it's through whatsapp 
I would gladly give you my private phone number and I'm with you to help and to assist in everything you need and we'll be in touch and Bezat Hashem, Hashem will give you that blessing to believe in yourselves and to be strong, being honest, being who you are and not to fall to the criticism and negativity of the world. Just go positive, believe in yourselves and the Creator will answer your prayers and requests. Amen. Can be we hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.